It seems like every Thursday throughout this year, Major League Baseball is Eastern, but the early only slate is actually bigger. It is a five game slate. So you know what that means. It is time for a split slate podcast for today here on the solo shot. We'll go through the main slate first. We'll jump ahead after that to the early only slate so that if you're listening after 1235 PM Eastern, you can still listen to the first part of the podcast there. But if you are looking right now for the early only slate discussion before 1235 PM Eastern, check out the episode description, wherever you get your podcasts and jump there right now, and then dive on in the rest of the slate. Welcome on into the solo shot. That's right here on the FanDuel podcast network and numberfire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for numberfire.com here to break down both the early only and the main slate over at fanduel.com. The early only again at 12 35 PM Eastern, the main at 7 10 PM Eastern. So Again, if you want to jump ahead, check out the description. There will be a timestamp there letting you know where to go if you want to get that main or that early only slate discussion. We'll dive in the main slate here in just one second. But first, a quick reminder to make sure you are subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts because we have NASCAR and USC coming up tomorrow, MLB every weekday, PGA, of course, uh, with the PGA Championship is now locked. But every week we do the PGA podcast still here on the Number Fire daily fantasy podcast feed so go search for the number fire daily fantasy podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts hit subscribe if you like what you hear leave us a rating and review as well the nba playoffs are heating up and you can make every game feel like game seven on FanDuel sportsbook an official partner of the nba throughout the playoffs all customers can place a no sweat same game parlay each week you'll get up to $20 in free bets if you don't win. FanDuel has so many ways to play, and best of all, when you do win, you'll get paid faster than a fast break. Either way, you'll get up to $20 in free bets if your same-game parlay during the playoffs does not win. FanDuel Sportsbook, an official partner of the NBA. Must be 21 plus in select states. Refund issued as non withdrawable free bets that expire in seven days after receipt. Max free bet $20 per week. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 Gambler. It was at fanduel.com slash RG. In Arizona, call 100 Next Step or text Next Step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1 888 789 7777. Visit ccpg.org chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WHIP-IT. In Louisiana, 1-877-770-STOP. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY. In Tennessee, call the red line at 1-800-889-9789. In West Virginia, 1-800-GAMBLER.NET. Or in Wyoming, 1-800-522-4700. Let's dig in now to this three-game main slate. Once again, lock is at 7.10 p.m. Eastern. The only weather notes for this main slate is that it is colder in Boston for the Mariners and Red Sox. So I would downgrade batters there for that one. The pitching preview for this main slate, we have Zach Gallon checking in at $10,600. From Valdez is $9,700. And George Kirby, the only other guy above $8,000, he is $8,500. It is pretty obvious to say I love Zach Gallon in this spot. And it's not just a product of tonight's slate being a shorter one. I just think that he is genuinely a fantastic play for DFS. Gallon is facing the Cubs, which is a good matchup for a righty. Their active roster has a 27% strikeout rate against righties in 2022, which is the highest mark on this main slate. Gowan is also just on an absolute heater to start the year. He has made six starts. He has a 2.89 skill interactive ERA with a 27% strikeout rate and a 31% hard hit rate allowed. That's kept his ERA down at 1.05, which is basically Cy Young level stuff. And it's not just the results. His, his expected ERA at Baseball Savant is under two. So, Gallon, when you dig in, is not getting a ton of whiffs, but that's never really been his game. He's a guy who gets a lot of called strikes. I think that he will keep up the great stuff he has shown to open the year. Might not stick at quite this level, but he also doesn't need to because, I mean, even to regress Zach Gallon is going to be very good. I've got him projected for 6.9 strikeouts for tonight. Nobody else on this main slate is even at higher at five or higher. So I think that for this slate, you plug in Zach Gallon. And you figure out the rest from there. You, you plug him in, you log out, figure out the rest in terms of stacking. He is definitively the top guy for tonight. Now, number two in the strikeout projections is actually Fromber Valdez. And I find that thrilling because I love Valdez as a pitcher, a real world major league baseball pitcher. 
but I don't often get to use him in DFS because of the low strikeout rate. But I get to use him tonight, and I'm very on board with doing that in my non-gallon lineups, as you as they may be. Valdez has some just like sicko level numbers this year. His skill interactive ERA is 3.27, but a 34% hard hit rate. And my favorite one, he has let up a fly ball 7% of the time. Seven, as in seven, seven, one single digit, 7% fly ball rate, which is wild. He hasn't gotten a lot of strikeouts, and those are huge for DFS because they get you points. We want points. You know, it's pretty easy. Helps boost both your floor and your ceiling. But I've got Valdez projected for 100 pitches, which gets him a decent strikeout number just via length. And I know the rest of what he does will be good. Valdez is facing the Rangers. 22% strikeout rate against lefties. Not great, but not bad either. So I'm very okay with how this slate wound up breaking. I know it's a three-game slate, but I think this is actually pretty good. I'm still going to favor Gallon by a wide margin, but I will take advantage and dabble in Valdez when I don't go there. I think these two are just rock star level plays, and I'm very on board with using both of them here, but Gallon to me is the runaway favorite. I think the top stack here has to be the Astros. They're facing Glenn Otto, and Otto, I think, is a better pitcher than his 6.38 ERA, and I would expect that to come down, but there are legitimate reasons that number is so high. Specifically, Otto is walking a lot of guys right now. He's also letting up too much hard contact, and that's different than the issues he had in the small sample last year. Six starts last year, four in the majors so far this year. Because last year's Walker is 7% with a 37% hard hit rate, which means he could get better. But we've seen glimpses of these issues from him in the past, specifically back in the minors. So it's not a huge surprise to see some of those, those flaws crop back up here once again. It's led to a 7.73 expected ERA, which is actually higher than his real mark right now. Now, Otto has faced some tough teams, but Houston is one of the tough teams he faced. Two runs uh, allowed in four and a third innings, which is not terrible, but they got a 130 WRC plus against righties, a 200 ISO, and both those numbers are far and away the top marks on this main slate. It's just a bad situation for Otto, so I will rank the Astros first by a significant margin here, and I think that it's it's just pretty obvious why we should want to do so. In the small sample, Otto has really struggled against lefties. So we're, I'm always high on Jordan Alvarez and Kyle Tucker. That I'll be higher on them here. That's no change. But we talked about Michael Brantley earlier on the week, how I'm changing my view of him. And he's kept up, um, I guess, uh, what I would say is slowly turning up the knob on his upside. I think that it's less appealing with offense getting higher throughout the, throughout the league. But do still think that Brantley's an option at 3,000 and a guy I will use within my Astros stack. Our second stack feels gross, but I do think it's correct. That is the Arizona Diamondbacks, and it's in part by default because the Mariners, too many lefties for me to stack uh, uh, against Rich Hill. I do like George Kirby's talent a lot against the Red Sox. The Red Sox will be next on this list, so they're third for me. But Arizona, I like a bit more. They're facing Marcus Stroman, which is why this feels gross, because I adore Marcus Stroman. But he's coming off the COVID IL. He's been on it for 11 days did not make a rehab start, so I have no idea what kind of condition he will be in for the start today or how long he'll go. And there were some struggles for Stroman before his stint on the IL. He was letting up a lot of hard contact. The ground ball rate was down to 46%, and his swinging strike rate was 7.3%. I would still expect Stroman to rebound eventually because he's a very good pitcher, but right now he's not the typical Marcus Stroman. Arizona is not like a great team, but they're also pretty fun for stacking, honestly. I, I dig them a little bit. They got a 182 ISO against righties with a 44% fly ball rate. I kind of like them, uh, as weird as that may be. So the Red Sox uh, and the right-handed Mariners are options, but I'd rank Arizona a hair higher in this spot. And they do have guys, individuals, who are fun for stacking. Alec Thomas, still batting low in the order, but he's been awesome since he got called up. Dalton Varsho has been phenomenal all year season-long dynasty leagues where he's a catcher eligible sick love it christian walker david peralta they both have fly ball rates above 47 percent against righties so those four varsho thomas walker peralta all really good plays in my mind we'll see if Cattell Marte can play he's a bit banged up right now but if he does play i'd be there he hasn't been great so far this year potentially due to the injuries but um if he does play i could be okay with it the problem is it's a hand injury and hand injuries always scare me bad even when they play so i could consider him but i like those guys all a bit more 
That wraps up our main slate discussions. Let's dive in now to the early only slate. If you're listening to this after 1235 p.m. Eastern, see ya tomorrow. Uh, check back in there. It is a four or a five game slate uh, for this early only slate. Lock is at 1235 p.m. Eastern for that one. And the weather is all good. So let's dive in to the pitching preview for the early only slate. Chris Bassett checks in at $10,400 with you, Darvish, 91. Bruce Zimmerman up to $8,900, deservedly so. And Jordan Montgomery rounds at the top group. He is $8,100. And to me, on this early only slate, it is very clear that Chris Bassett is the top guy in the slate. I'd expect Montgomery to get a lot of buzz due to the matchup. I like Bassett a lot more for me personally. Bassett checks every box. Uh, specifically, he checks the strikeout box. He has a 27% strikeout rate so far this year. That is the highest on the slate by five and a half percentage points in each guy's most relevant sample. And Bassett is stretched out. He's gone 100 plus pitches in each of his past two starts. That's helped him flash a good amount of upside. We've seen Bassett get six plus strikeouts in all but one start. He has hit eight in three out of seven. And the Cardinals have been bet- getting better against righties. Their WRC plus is up to 107, and they still have just a 19% strikeout rate. So it's not a perfect spot by any means. That's why he checks almost every box. Matchup not quite there. But to me, Bassett, clearly the top guy. I've got him projected for 6.2 strikeouts. Nobody else here is higher than 5.4. So to me, Bassett will be the top guy on the early only slate. Number two, I'm going to go you Darvish. I think that you could push back and say Jordan Montgomery. But Montgomery hasn't gone more than 90 pitches yet this year. Kind of a lower strikeout guy. The matchup's very good, but I have my concerns. I have concerns about Darvish too, but I don't put him second anyway. Uh, the first concern is the matchup because the Phillies are a very good team. They have a 110 WRC plus against righties. The second concern for Darvish is strikeouts. His strikeout rate is 20% for the full season. It does go up a hair to 21% in his past five starts with his slot usage being up, but that's still not high. Not getting a lot of whiffs either with an 11% swinging strike rate. That's why I still prefer Bassett by a wide margin. But Darvish has still been solid. He's got a low walk rate. He's got solid batted ball data. He's had good results. And plus, unlike Montgomery, his pitch count is very high. So Darvish and Bassett are the only two guys on the slate I projected to throw more than 90 pitches. Darvish is at eight, at 97. So I'm not high on him. I'm just higher on him than others on the slate. And again, I would expect Montgomery to be more popular, but... I mean, like you look at his K-prop, and it's like absurd for today uh, relative to what he's done so far this year. So I think he'll be popular. I just prefer Darvish. So I will put him second here. Uh, it's begrudging, and I think that it's pretty. he's pretty far behind Bassett, but I will go Bassett one, Darvish two. As far as stacking goes, I am waiting for the White Sox to snap out of their slump. They're WRC plus against right. He's still just 82 uh, but they got high temperatures for today. Uh, it's 85 degrees. That's 15 degrees higher than any other game. And I think that we can stack the White Sox here and should stack the White Sox here. They're facing Carlos Hernandez, who's had a brutal start to the year with really rough results. He also has a 5.90 skill interactive ERA. So tough peripherals, more walks and strikeouts. The batted ball data is not terrible, but it's also not good enough to overcome the bad in the plate discipline data. We've seen Hernandez let up multiple runs in every start. He let up four plus runs in half of those six starts. So I think the White Sox are clearly the top option here, and I will treat them as such on this slate. The one guy who hasn't really been slumping is Gavin Sheets. He has a 46% fly ball rate against righties with a 21% strikeout rate. His ISO is there too. You do have a glut of guys who kind of are uh, all eligible at the same spot for the White Sox, which can sometimes be a bit annoying but the good thing is that sheets um you know i think that he separates above yasmani grandal among the catcher slash first baseman type guys i wish they give him outfield eligibility but i do think that sheets to me is worth it for sure get jose abreu in there the fly ball rate bit low but hitting the ball hard so i think that sheets probably above grandal for me in that like glut of catcher slash first baseman that's the one issue i have with stacking the white Sox. they kind of Get a bit annoying there, but I do think that they are the top stack on this slate. I think the other side of that game is also very stackable. That's the Royals against Vince Velasquez. And I'm going to rank them second right ahead of the Mets and the Yankees. And it's because of Velasquez's continued struggles that he has had. 
he's lagging behind even last year in some key categories where the hard hit rate is up to 46%. The strikeout rate is down to 20%. He is walking fewer guys, but that also means he's letting up more balls in play. And those have not gone well for him so far. We have seen Velasquez have some good starts, but there have also been some blowups in there too. He let up seven runs and three home runs last time out. He let up five runs and two home runs to the Twins in late April. The Royals are not great, but I can't get behind them on a short slate. So I think they're my number two stack. Though again, the Yankees and the Mets are very close. You can definitely go with the Guardians against um, Tyler Malley. He does let up some uh, some fly balls for sure, but prefer these other teams over them on this slate. We just have to use the guys with upside when we are using the Royals. Make sure you are doing so. And that's tougher with no Salvador P- Perez right now. Bobby Witt is legit, so no questions there. Hunter Dozier is solid. Whit Merrifield, I think, will trend up in the near future. He's also swiping some bags. Andrew Benintendi is fine. I'm also in on MJ Melendez, who should catch with Perez being out. So we got guys. It's just okay to be selective in which ones you use. So dig into the numbers on these Royals guys. Decide which people actually do have upside and operate once you decide uh, who you want to roll with there. I realized I forgot Dinger picks for the main slate. Just realizing this live. Okay, so Dinger picks for the main slate. We'll go Jordan Alvarez for the boring one. And I'm going to go with Alec Thomas uh, for the fun one over there. Dinger picks for the early only slate. Uh, So I have to go with the White Sox. Uh, I definitely have to go there. Um, I'm going to go with... Man, Man, this is tougher than I thought it was going to be. I'm going to go with two fun ones. Let's just go with two fun ones here. Glaber Torres against Bruce Zimmerman. I think we'll go deep. He's plus 490 for a dinger over a FanDuel Sportsbook. So Torres is a fun one. I'll go with Gavin Sheets too. Maybe he's not fun. I think he is personally. So um, we'll go with two fun ones for this one. Gavin Sheets, Glaber Torres, home run calls for the only, early only slate and for the main slate. I'm going to go with, I forgot who I went already. Uh, Jordan Alvarez and... Alec Thomas, your home run call for today. Professional podcaster, everybody, uh, doing things on the fly here for today. That is all that we have here for this Thursday Split Slate podcast. Hopefully a bit more coordinated, organized tomorrow uh, for a regular slate. That'll be on Friday. So if you want to get a better organized podcast, or actually remember to do the dinger picks, hit subscribe on the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed. Wherever you get your podcasts, we have MLB every weekday, UFC, NASCAR, PGA Weekly. Hit subscribe, get those podcasts right as they are posted wherever you get your podcasts. If you've got questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. Big thank you to everyone for tuning in for today. Good luck to you on both slates for today. We'll talk to you once again on Friday for another night of MLB DFS. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.